I will try to uh, present in a few minutes um, about 40 years of research in the areas of what makes people uh, function well and uh, uh, feel well about their lives. Uh, but um, the, um, the present uh, talk is, is really the uh, outcome of uh, Ferdinando asking me to, to come here and talk about uh, this uh, event which was about the power of love. And um, my ignorance about love, at least in a kind of cerebral uh, way, um, and so I was kind of doubtful that I have anything to add to this uh, important topic which has been discussed for so long uh, by civilizations everywhere. And um, I, I wasn't sure I could say anything new. So I looked at the literature in my field, which is what uh, scholars are supposed to do. They, they see what the preceding generations or the current generations are saying about things that you want to know about. And I found a very interesting uh, lack of depth or coverage of this feeling or this uh, emotion or you know, this phenomenon in, in the lit literature of my field, which is psychology. And um, most, of, there is a lot of, uh, written about romantic love, about parental love, but most of it seems uh, either rather obvious and also rather restricted to a certain form of the expression of what I thought was uh, really a much broader, larger um, issue. And I wasn't sure I wanted to come and talk about these things uh, that uh, I read about. So I um, was almost ready to say, to decline the, in the invitation until I, um, this summer when uh, my wife and I spent a month in northern Italy here, uh, north of Verona, where um, a colleague uh, lived who is um, the director of a choir, a choir that sings not only locally, but travels all around the world. And it's one of the most respected uh, folk choirs. And it's made up of uh, people who are doctors, lawyers, plumbers, uh, electricians, uh, factory workers, uh, insurance people. And they meet every Tuesday evening um, to rehearse old songs, folk songs from, from the country. And I knew some of these songs myself from when I was young. And I had the uh, privilege uh, to sing with them some of these songs. And uh, um, the, usually the first song that uh, the squire sings when they go around and perform is one from the western parts of the Alps in the border between France and Italy. And it's, it's called uh, Montagne Val d'Autaine that is um, Mountains of the Aosta Valley. And it starts with the words uh, mountains of uh, the Valley of Aosta, you are my love. And it, it goes on to describe the feeling of someone who lives in these mountains. And it explains why you love these mountains. And it turns out that it's not only the mountains that you love, but you love things like uh, the, uh, the song goes on and says, um, you know, I love my hat that I wear. I love the belt around my trousers. I love my girlfriend. And 
I love the chalet where I live. And it goes like this and said, why should I, it would be crazy for me to leave this place where I love everything. And it's an old song and it's, um, as I watched around me, the people who were singing, they were transported in a sense, like people who sing together often are. And you could tell that these people understood and felt that, yes, it's possible to love your hat and your house and the mountains or the places where you live. And it occurred to me that, yes, this is something that we haven't really understood much in psychology, that um, we, we have a, a kind of rather restricted view of what uh, partly a Darwinian or a, a view that we love each other because that's the way to survive and, and that's the way to procreate and to continue the species and so forth. And everything is a derivative of that feeling that comes from uh, the survival instinct that drives us. But actually, it, we have gotten to a point where we uh, have the ability to love the creation as a whole in which we are part of. And it's that then when that insight came to me, I, I told Ferdinando, yes, I, um, it would be a good idea to, to uh, try to enter this dialogue about the power of love. And when I returned to my university, I thought that it would be good to start doing a little research on what um, actually people do love. And so um, I found that, that the idea was very attractive to the students. So we, um, I took the five best students of those who applied and I asked them to interview each one, uh, four people different in age and in social stat class and just ask them, what do you love? And the, uh, these interviews then we uh, found what, uh, whether there was a trend that we could use. We developed a, a survey, a questionnaire. We interviewed 200 more. Now, at this point, I can share with you this, uh, you know, what we found so far because it has interesting points. And um, I hope that when we go back, we will continue. And the next time we will try with 2,000. But the um, question was originally a simple one. We asked them, can you tell me what do you love? And most people were very glad to tell you what they loved. After that, we asked all kinds of other questions. But today, I just want to, to uh, talk about the things that people mentioned uh, in the survey that we did. And as you would expect, uh, it's true that uh, almost half of the 37% um, uh, of the uh, activities, uh, the, the things that people say they loved were people. And that's natural. You would expect that. And uh, it, is, it is, in fact, um, the thing that brings most love to, to us. And this is the obvious, um, uh, uh, the obvious response and uh, the very first one that people usually tell you. But uh, interestingly, activities, that is things that people do, um, turn out to be almost as uh, large as uh, family, in fact, larger than family, and about the same as other people, which includes friends, includes the humanity as a whole, and so forth. 
So uh, when you uh, take those three large ones, you have accounted for over half of what people say spontaneously that they love. It's interesting also to look at the uh, smaller parts. Uh, as you see, nature comes out as being uh, a, a large object of love in people's life, and um, which is which is obviously a good thing here. Um, other thing, other places is only four percent, and they they can be the city. M many people say that they love to go out in the evening when the lights start coming up in the city and people are going home from work and they, they see, seem happy to get home and uh, there is bustling and energy in the city. And so, the, but nature is more than twice as much and it involves everything from sitting on the beach and watching the sunset to uh, being on the mountains uh, so these are, then uh, objects are a large proportion, but the objects are not usually loved because they are expensive or valuable. The objects are loved because they have a meaning to the person that connects them either to their own past, that is things they own for a long time and they remember when uh, these objects were first acquired and it, it materializes an experience or because the object materializes a relationship. That is, uh, here is the, I love this uh, silver teapot because my grandmother uh, left it to me. And so the objects um, are in a sense symbols of relationships or symbols of one's own past and so forth. Interestingly enough, uh, values are not loved that much. I mean, the values that people say they love are things like uh, freedom or uh, democracy or equality and things like that. But there are uh, relatively few of those, and very few of them have uh, religious connotations anymore, at least in this sample that we had. That's why we need more research to find out more how these things play out. And then art and music, again, are a fairly small part. Um, in fact, art and music are only twice as much loved as pets. Um, the animals that you have in the home, which are a great source of, uh, a reasonably great source of love, and so forth. So this is the beginning of kind, of kind of trying to understand what the everyday reference to, of the word love means in, uh, to people. And what I would like to talk more about is activities, because those are actually the things that I have been mostly uh, uh, studying myself in the past. And in this group, uh, we have um, broken down what people say into physical activities, which are sports um, and hiking and climbing and swimming and dancing, which is the largest uh, s a s a single category which seems very simple-minded in a way, but after all, our body is something that um, we love to use because by um, using our body, we experience ourselves, which otherwise, it's, it's, it's not a, such a strong concept to live by itself, but when you experience it in your body, uh, you, you feel alive, you feel that you are yourself, and so this is not a, um, not a trivial thing. Interestingly, eating is as often an object of love as it is uh, uh, creative activities or reading. 
Uh, the first two obviously are the physiological um, uh, conditions of life that we, we, in a sense, have to love if we want to survive. Whereas the creative activities, which are a great variety from playing musical instruments to um, uh, needlework, gardening, uh, anything that has to do with the growing or, or adding to the uh, complexity of life and to the future. It's a very, it should be much larger, but it's, uh, it is kind of uh, a very important, even though not such a, a, a great part of it, of things that people uh, love. Now, activities, um, as I say, is, are uh, as important almost as objects of love as people are. And you wonder, you know, in a sense, why, why is that the case? And um, one of the things that reminds me, uh, that, that helped me to understand this, is really going back to something like that uh, Dante Alighieri wrote over 700 years ago in the De Monarchia, which was his attempt to develop a philosophical plan for government and society. But he, in the De Monarchia, he writes that um, every living thing loves his life. And through activity, the living person uh, um, experiences himself as an agent that is um, active in the world. And to be able to um, act freely is the way in which uh, you uh, express your being, and that is what we love about our actions, because they are a mirror, in a sense, of our own being, which is what we have to start loving. Obviously, this love needs to then go out and be uh, generative as the first um, uh, all, all of the talks before, the, the, all the three talks before mine were really talking about a self which is already loving itself in a sense and is confident and is expressing uh, and giving f out from itself uh, the care and uh, concern for, for society and others. So, uh, but I think this is kind of the basic on which then the greater love can grow. And at this point, I'm being uh, shooed off the stage, which is, um, I thanks for your attention, and I hope you can uh, go ahead. <laughs>